It is Wednesday, November eighteenth, uh, November eighth, two thousand seventeen. It is eight p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and so you know what time it is. It's time for a little bit of coin metal, and unfortunately, I did not get to jujitsu today. I um, I'm still kind of tending this uh, this injury with my knee, so I don't want to be rolling around and have somebody you know push on it to to like uh, reposition my legs so they can move me or something and end up hurting it even worse so I'm still I'm doing things at home you know just uh, some some single person drills and and uh, movement drills and stuff like that and uh, definitely doing stuff to try and get my cardio up and running on the on the old treadmill and although it is not the same as rolling with my compatriots it's at uh, jiu-jitsu class um, it is something it's better than nothing and uh, as soon as I can I do intend to get back on the mat and start rolling again anyway so today's been relatively exciting um, there's been something happened we're not entirely sure what um, despite some of the articles that we're going to be reading today um, I'm not seeing any indications that it's it's actually true, but you know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look around and uh, we're definitely gonna talk about it today. Um, but supposedly somebody said that <clears throat> Segwit Two X is called off. Now I you know I've been I've been watching this for quite a little quite a while now and. I, there are several websites that you can go to and check stuff out, and I, I don't know what to think of this. You know, it's I keep going back to uh, Coin Dance, and uh, just look at look it up in in Google Coin Space Dance, and uh, that has all kinds of metrics on it supposedly of what the net, the network's doing right now, and according to it. 81 point something percent of the uh, of the miners are still signaling intent to support Segwit 2x so you know either a coin dance is full of shit or B all of the articles that we're going to read today talking about how Segwit 2x is is all done and done you know we, we've made a decision are full of shit and, and personally I'm thinking it's the latter. And I really feel like that's kind of stupid, you know, that me out here in this this AB radio station and my ardent and, and true listeners and we're we're on top of this and, and they're not. I, I don't get it. You know, it's like why why aren't they going to fucking uh, coin dance and finding out what it is? I mean here I, I'm doing it right now. I'm I'm going to Coin Dance. I am at Coin Dance right now, and when you click on blocks, it, it it tells you right at the top here: explicit mining pool support by proposal. And the first one is Segwit Two X intention, just meaning intend intending to support. Right, that's at eighty one point two percent. An emergent consensus, which is directly below that, is at 31.3%. Now, if that's the case, <clears throat> if that's the case, why are all these people saying that the miners are are calling off Segwit 2x? You know, I mean, it, it, either a this is bullshit, or they're full of shit. It, it's it's one or the other. You know, and given the history of this of Coin Dance, um, I don't see anything to lead me to believe that uh, that they're lying to us. You know, they've been tracking this stuff explicitly. It says right on here, explicit mining pool support by proposal. And I don't know. I might I might try and look for uh, for some other resources uh, that would tell me what that you know. A little further information with regard to that. Um, oh well, here, hold on. 
The following mining pools support Segwit2x intention. Ant pool, bat pool, bit club, bitcoin.com, bitfury, um, bixin, uh, btc.com, btc.top, btcc, bw pool, gb miners, slush pool, and via btc. So yeah, these are all the mining pools that are supposedly still se signaling um, intent to support Segwit2x. So what the fuck is it? I mean, were you just bullshitting us this whole time? Or, you know, what what the fuck is going on here? And I don't know, I, I think that a lot of this um, a lot of this obfuscation is just it's just a bunch of, you know, smokescreen. The real intent is to push the miners until they're all doing SegWit and just lie to everybody and tell everybody, oh yeah, we got SegWit in a long time ago. Oh yeah, we're just we're just gonna make you use SegWit coin and, and you're just gonna have to take it and, and and there you go. Whereas the reality will be that the miners are still mining regular Bitcoin in the background or regular Bitcoin transactions in the background and then they'll just slowly get crowded out with segregated witness I mean that's that's the way they intend to do it and that's pretty much the way that they've done it on on all of the other altcoins and I, I've said I think this is like a multi-pronged attack where they do the astroturfing up front right and that's just to obfuscate perception I mean because how long this how long is this fucking quote unquote debate really been going on I mean I don't think it's a debate really what's going on is there's a disinformation campaign and then there's what the miners are doing and the two do not match up and the disinformation campaign lies about the miners and talks shit about the miners and says things like the miners aren't important when in fact if you don't have miners you don't have a fucking network and no network no blockchain no blockchain no block reward no block reward no bitcoin that's how that works you know so this whole idea that oh miners don't matter uh, who the fuck is saying that you know if you see somebody saying that in person slap that person they they are brainwashed and need to be fixed you gotta like give them a little cognitive adjustment or something, man. God damn. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw down into some music. We have not selected a first dance yet. Gee, Willikers. I can only do so much at once. I can look at CoinDesk, I can rant, and I can listen to music in the background, but I can't do it all at once. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Fuck it. Black Dahlia Murder. Widowmaker. Here on Coin Metal. And that was Roots, Bloody Roots by Sepultura. It's an oldie but goodie. Certainly the first time I played it on this show in a while. Um, but that was because from the last build to this build, for whatever reason, I just forgot to put Roots into my music collection. And so there it is. We have it now. So if you happen to have any special requests off of that album... Feel free to hit me up in either Telegram or IRC and uh, let me know. Anyway, I took a little bit of time that we had from the the music break to kind of set this up a little bit because today, as far as I'm concerned, has just been a big disinformation campaign, and uh, I find it kind of uh, kind of lame. Anyway. Let's get it back to it. The first one I've got here is on uh, CryptoCoins News. Bitcoin price flash crashes as market wrestles with Segwit2x cancellation. And you know what? That's one thing I forgot to look up. There was a Reddit article that uh, that started, started it um, off for the day. I'm trying to find exactly where it was. Let's see here. I've got my filter set to where it's it's today's. 
or at least the last 24 hours, you know, kind of narrow it down a little bit. And let's see here. Um, let's see. Over. Got to put over in there. And we'll try all. And uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, that's a good possibility there too. Sorry, I, I was looking at some of the uh, some of the stuff here that came up when I looked for it. Anyway, <coughs> where is it here? The Segwit 2x canceled. All right, here it is. And this is the. I think this is the first article that I read about this today. And I I may or may not be correct on that, but I have a uh, a similar article for the end of this. And, and just to let you know, I I am looking at other sites to see if I can find like whether or not they have a um, a tag on the uh, transactions or blocks indicating that they're uh, supporting. Segwit 2x, and from what I can tell, it looks like uh, xbt.eu um, or xbit. Is it xbit? No, it's just xbt.eu. And let's see here. I, I was just trying to find this other article that I have at the end uh, for kind of sewing up the the theme that I have here in mind. You know, I, I try not to plan this show just because, well, you know, things don't always get out. I think, yeah, all right. So I got it straightened out. So let's get back up to the star here. And here it is. Bitcoin Segwit 2X, Segwit 2X Final Steps. And this was by Mike Belshi, uh, written Wednesday, November 8th, uh, 458 UTC 2017. The Segwit2x effort began in May with a simple pur purpose to increase the block size and inc improve Bitcoin scalability. At the time, the Bitcoin community was in crisis after nearly three years of heavy debate and consensus for Segwit seemed like a distant mirage with only 30% among miners. Segwit2x found its first success in August as it broke the deadlock and quickly led to Segwit's successful activation. Since that time, the team shifted, shifted its efforts to phase two of the project, a two megabyte block size increase. Our goal has always been a smooth upgrade for Bitcoin. Although the, we strongly believe in the need for a larger block size, there is something we believe is even more important, keeping the community together. Unfortunately, it is clear that we have not built sufficient consensus for a clean block size upgrade at this time. Continuing on the current path could divide the community and be a setback to Bitcoin's growth. This was never the goal of Segwit2x. As fees rise on the blockchain, we believe it will eventually become obvious that on-chain capacity increases are necessary. When that happens, we hope the community will come together and find a solution, possibly with a block size increase. Until then, we are suspending our plans for the upcoming 2 megabyte upgrade. We want to thank everyone that contributed constructively to Segwit2x, whether you were in favor or against. Your efforts are what makes Bitcoin great. Bitcoin remains the greatest form of money mankind has ever seen, and we remain dedicated to protecting and fostering its growth worldwide. And this was apparently signed off by Mike Belshi, Wences Cesares, Jihan Wu, Jeff Garzik, Peter Smith, and Eric Voorhees. And that, that, let's see, and it's got a uh, HTML attachment, so we'll check that out really quick here. Oh, it's just a bunch of bullshit. Oh. It didn't render properly because I didn't have all the scripts allowed. I hate that. Why, why can't you fucking people just write a regular web page? Why do you need so many scripts? I don't get it. I mean, it doesn't have to look wonderful or whatever, but I can I can manage something similar on a static page. 
any case, so yeah, that's, I guess this was like the uh, first shot that gave everybody that wrote articles about this the impression that this was, this was the deal. And so, let's see, are there any other messages on this? Let's see if there are replies to this. Next message, da da da, da final steps. Okay. Alright, so that's that. And the next article I got here is Bitcoin pla- price fla- flash crashes as market wrestles with Segwit2x cancellation. And this is written by Josiah Wilmoth uh, on 11-9-2017, or is that 9-11-2017? Hmm. Let's check and verify. I'm starting to wonder. Uh, no, I, I don't know. It, it, it depends. Some some people put in their, their dates weird. I mean, and this could just as easily be September 11th, 2017 as it could be 11-9-2017, even though that wouldn't make any sense because that would be from the future. So, but it does say Segwit 2x cancellation. So we're going to go with it as this was intended for tomorrow. And this is Josiah. Josiah Wilmoth was the author. And let's get to it here. The Bitcoin price experienced a nearly one thousand dollar flash crash after reaching an all time, a new all time high just below seventy nine hundred dollars in the wake of the cancellation of Segwit 2x. Bitcoin price flash crashes after blah, blah, blah. As CCN reported, Mike Belshi, chief executive of Bitcoin wallet service BitGo and project lead for Segwit2x, announced that the controversial Bitcoin protocol upgrade had been suspended indefinitely due to a lack of consensus and the near certainty of a blockchain split following its activation. The Bitcoin price surged in response to the announcement rising to an all-time high of 78.99 at 5.30 UTC on Bitcoin exchange Bitfinex. However, soon after, the Bitcoin price fell into decline and approximately uh, 6.40 UTC, it fell prey to a flash crash and plummeted to 69.77. This plunge cost- constituted a $922 or 12% decline from the all-time high it had set just an hour prior. Market sorts out Segwit2x. Bitcoin's rapid price swing indicates a potential conflict between the short and long-term impacts of Segwit2x cancellation. The hard fork would have, been, would have split Bitcoin into two competing blockchains and the fight for supremacy would have been ugly. Bitcoin services expected to undergo serious disruptions and there was a high probability that some users would lose funds due to replay attacks and other exploits. That Bitcoin avoided fracturing in this manner is bullish for its long-term prospects and will encourage so-called hodlers investors with extended investment horizons to increase their positions. However, Some analysts had speculated that the impending activation of Segwit2x was actually propping up the Bitcoin price in the short term and contributing to its market share. The reason for this is that a blockchain split would have effectively resulted in the creation of a new cryptocurrency, providing current Bitcoin holders with, quote, free coins on the second blockchain. Because Segwit2x activation appeared certain, traders may have already priced in the value of these, quote, crypto dividends and increased their Bitcoin positions accordingly. Now that the hard fork has been suspended, they may transfer some of that capital back into the altcoin markets. The Bitcoin price spiked to $78.99 and subsequent crash to 6977 an eventual recovery to a present value of 7176 bear witness to this conflict between traders 
who prioritize short-term profits, and investors who are primarily concerned with long-term growth. Expect volatility as the market continues to sort out the impact of SegWit 2x cancellation. Yeah. Okay. So that uh, that's that's article number two backing up this whole whole business here. And uh, as a matter of fact, I've got a I've got yet another article like right here. Fuck it. Let's let, let's dive into this one too. And this one's on uh, Crypto Coins News. Uh, Segwit 2x hard fork called off. Common sense or delaying the inevitable. And this is again by Josiah Wilmoth on eight, uh, yeah, November eighth of two thousand seventeen. No picture, but uh, I'm going to go by the name. Yes, penis. The controversial Segwit 2x fork has been suspended indefinitely, with promoters citing a lack of consensus for the November sixteen software upgrade. Segwit 2x called off. The suspension was announced by Segwit2x project lead Mike Belshi in an email distributed to the Segwit2x mailing list, but it also bore the signatures of Wences Cesares, Jihan Wu, Jeff Garzik, Peter Smith, and Eric Voorhees. Interesting, the statement was not signed by Barry Silbert whose digital currency group was instrumental in organizing the New York agreement that set Segwit2x into motion. The agreement had called for both the activation of segregated witness and an increase in the block size to 2 megabytes. Segwit activated earlier this year, although it was debatable what role the NYA played in its implementation. However, the block size increase never achieved consensus, and the debate became increasingly vitriolic as the appropriate, the approximate November 16 date for the hard fork approached. At this point, nearly everyone was resigned to a scenario in which Bitcoin would split into two competing blockchains. However, those fears were dashed on Wednesday as Belshi shared that the developers and promoters of the protocol upgrade were concerned that activating the hard fork could prove to be a setback to Bitcoin's growth. Although we strongly believe in the need for a larger block size, there is something we believe is even more important. Keeping the community together, Belshi wrote. Unfortunately, it is clear that we have not built sufficient consensus for a clean block size upgrade at this time. Continuing on the current path could divide the community and be a setback to Bitcoin's growth. Common sense or delaying the inevitable. Segwit2x opponents immediately be began to celebrate the news on social media channels. Common sense prevails, declared Litecoin creator and outspoken Segwit2x opponent Charlie Lee. Now let's work together towards scaling safely. He added that on-chain scaling may, scaling may be necessary in the future, but that a hard fork should not be activated without broad consensus. Dogecoin creator and Jackson Palmer said that the move was merely delaying the inevitable, arguing that transaction fees are still high and that Bitcoin scaling is, quote, far from solved. Nobody is actually using Bitcoin as a currency, though, so I guess they are happy to ignore these facts. And that's Jackson Palmer, November 8th, 2017. And that's actually bullshit. I use Bitcoin as a currency and I get ass raped on tr transaction fees because of these fucking Segwit assholes and their fucking bullshit shitware and they won't fuck off and be their own fucking altcoin. No, no, no. We got to pollute Bitcoin because that's the big fucking target. Fuck you. Anyway, continuing on. The Bitcoin price fluctuated wildly in the wake of the announcement. Bitcoin immediately surged to $79.99 on cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex, but promptly flash crashed by more than $1,000 in a matter of minutes. 
At the time of writing, the Bitcoin price was trading at approximately $7,200 as the market continues to sort out what the announcement means for the short-term trajectory of the flagship currency. Uh, absolutely nothing. Um, that's, that's my contention. Absolutely nothing. You know, just like this whole thing has been a big fucking nothing burger. You know, this whole pressure to do segregated witness that's existed for two years, it's been a big fucking nothing burger. Now, see, personally, I believe that the reason for that is this. They have to dupe everybody first, okay? They have to get everybody irrevocably fucking committed to this idea of segregated witness. And then after that happens, then they're going to whip their dick out and slap everybody in the face with this fucking lightning network bullshit and be forcing you off chain to do transactions by keeping the transaction fees high. You see how that works? The, and I, I keep getting this nagging sensation that, you know, Segwit coin really isn't Bitcoin and that what will be happening is that like when you send Bitcoin to somebody else, whoever is processing the transactions will get your Bitcoin and replace it with Segwit coin. And Segwit coin probably won't have a limit on cap or anything like that, but it won't be Bitcoin. And after a while, until, you know, after everybody is like hopelessly committed to that and, and, and used to the way that functions, then they'll whip it out and say, oh yeah, by the way, this is Segwit coin and you haven't been transacting in Bitcoin for several years, so just shut up and call it Bitcoin. You know, that that's personally, that's the way I feel about it. And I, I know that, that some would, some would probably argue with that, but so far, the majority of the of the arguments against um, block size increases and whatnot, they've all been bullshit arguments. I mean, really, if you were willing to make an, a, a node and set it up for, a, you know, a full node for just propagating Bitcoin transactions, if you were willing to do that at one megabyte, why wouldn't you be willing to do that at two megabytes, four megabytes, six megabytes? Eight megabytes. Why would you even give a fuck? It's no big difference to you. It's just more transactions in the block. Now, I think there should be some sort of compensatory thing, whereas where like the nodes get some sort of bit of the transaction fees off of transactions that they propagate. And I think this is one of the problems with the whole network is that we do have a separate set of nodes specifically for propagating the the transactions and then we have specific nodes for mining the transactions you know i i think that the system really shouldn't be dependent on that that you know the the miners should be the same thing as the fucking nodes you know the the regular full nodes that they be carrying a fucking full full cargo of the of the blockchain and be able to verify everything right there on site, whiz bang bam, not downloading it from another source, just hashing it right there. You know, I, I think between throughput increases on internet and hardware increases, you know, the, the throughput speed on hardware increasing, I think between those two things that we could still stay within the limits of what's currently of possible on our networks and be doing way better than we currently are and not have to go off chain I that's just the way I feel about it we didn't have to go off chain for the last block size increase we won't need to go off chain for the next block size increase I I don't I don't understand what's so contentious about that did we lose a whole shit shit ton of nodes when it it went from from one size of block to the next I don't think so. If we did, it was because it was a lot cheaper to run them back then. Although I don't know that it would have been too much. I don't know. I don't know that it would be too much more expensive to run them now as it would back then. It'd probably be even cheaper. You know, you could probably afford to set up just a stupid ass Raspberry Pi and be fucking propagating eight megabyte blocks, no problem. 
but I don't know. I mean, I if you're on a high speed internet connection, transmitting an eight megabyte block over over ten minutes, I don't I don't, I don't think that would be too difficult. I mean, really, in the in the age where we all have Wi Fi networks and whatnot in our own homes, I I don't think that's going to be an issue. And, and so the, the whole scaremongering with regard to that. Oh, we're going to lose nodes. There's going to be some places that can't do nodes. They're full of shit. If it's within your interest to have it, you will fucking have it. You know, if you're out there in the middle of fucking Zimbabwe and you got enough hardware to set up a full node and that's going to enable the, the vendors directly around you to make sure that their transactions are included on a block that... He, that that much better <coughs> that's that's an actual utility to your community you know and and depending on the utility that it actually provides it, it would decide whether or not it's actually valuable and Zimbabwe is having their Zimbabwe moment where they are transitioning into cryptocurrencies and other digital means of payments that aren't controlled directly by their government and I, I, I expect that trend to continue. Same thing with Venezuela. They're just like completely decoupling from what I understand. You know, it's like their their government still wants to live in the 1950s and, and they're transitioning cleanly into the 21st century. You know, it's like we, we've got these tools. We've got these tools that allow us to do global commerce and yet you want us to... You want us to abandon these tools so that we can do stupid ass jobs for you. I, I don't I don't I don't see that that's that's something that we should do. You know? Anyway, let's go ahead and throw back down into some music and what to play, what to play. You know, I haven't played any sixth yet. And they are they are more and more something that I, I listen to, especially when I'm working out. And um, I'm gonna play something off of uh, future in whose eyes and uh, let's go with Vivid here on Coin Metal. And that was Machine by Static X. And so, as we continue on into the depths of this whole business with regard to um, the Segwit 2X hard fork supposedly having been called off. And uh, let's see, we already read this one. So we're just going to go ahead and cash that. Yeah, like I said, you know what would make me like the most happy is if all the miners were flagging support for Segwit 2X like right up to the fucking moment, right? And then like as quickly as they could you know, maybe with like hours left, switch all their fucking miners over to Bitcoin Cash. Wouldn't that just cause people to like lose their fucking shit? <laughs> that would that would cause like major anal eruptions. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, we've lost containment. <laughs> So anyway, let's continue on with this because, you know, there there have been like 8 billion articles printed about this thing despite the fact that there's only the one, the one confirmation from Mike Belshi, supposedly from Mike Belshi. And, and I, I just want to take a moment and address this at this moment is that there have been plenty of scams throughout crypto. Okay, the the latest of which, as far as I'm concerned, is this whole Bitcoin gold um, supposed non-fork fork that didn't really fork that because it really wasn't actually Bitcoin and didn't use Bitcoin's blockchain or anything like that or any of the other qualifications that would actually make it part of Bitcoin or a fork of Bitcoin. And of course, this whole ongoing SegWit business. Now, one little important piece of information to glean from the uh, the initial article that we, we read concerning um, Segwit 2X, 
was why it was presented to begin with in New York. And the reason being is because the miners would not adopt Segwit. And as a matter of fact, in the article itself, it indicated 30% of the miners were supporting Segwit. Now, they need 95% for, for a protocol change. And I think I said this like a year, maybe two ago, that this whole business is like a big disinformation campaign where they're just trying to winnow down the resistance to SegWit. And in the meantime, you know, they're putting pressure on on state and federal governments, or I say state and federal because that's the context that we have for them here, but, you know, local and, you know, national governments um, putting pressure on miners and whatnot. And that hasn't been... A really widespread thing. I, I think we've seen just a little bit of it in uh, Venezuela and some in Russia where uh, there's been some sort of clamp down a little bit on some sort of mining. Um, I don't recall exactly what it was in Russia, but I do recall in Venezuela their situation because it, it made me laugh to no end, really. It still does. And that's that uh, they, they had this problem where these uh the venezuelans were using a lot of fucking electricity right and it's been reported now as as electricity theft but the fact of the matter is is their their electricity is more or less subsidized because they have a lot they have a lot of uh a lot of local energy let's just put it that way and so they've been utilizing it for mining and trying to divest themselves of the boulevard because it's just getting depreciated like they're, they're just printing so fucking much of it i think one of their drops was like 1400 1400 times or 1400 percent or some shit like that in a, a period of like a month or so you can't live on with the national currency do that doing that on you and i don't care if you're if your income is supposedly matching the uh the rate of inflation, you you will always lose face value on that. You know, the the arbitrage is never calculated in your favor there. And so, you know, they, they've been trying to get away from the boulevard, and one of their answers was to go to Bitcoin mining. But the strange thing that happened, and it, it, was, it was predicted by many people, um, I think at one point even I might have predicted it once, was that... The officials would take the hardware from the miners and set it up at their house and mine themselves. And that's exactly what happened in Venezuela, where they would bust down on these big mining operations, or as big as they managed to get before they got busted, and they would steal the mining hardware, and then they would take the shit home and set it up at their house. Because it's not actually illegal for the people there to mine. It's just not widely encouraged. <coughs> My apologies. I've been kind of fighting a uh, a cold trying to take me down, but I'm managing to stay above it. Um, but anyway, yeah, like I was saying, Venezuela. And so what, one of the other interesting things that happened was another prediction I'd made that if it became too big a pain in the ass to mine for Bitcoin, that they would start mining altcoins. And that's exactly what happened, or and what is happening in Venezuela, where not only are there 100,000 Bitcoin miners in Venezuela, there are also Ethereum miners in Venezuela. Now, I want to ask you, how many more times do you think it will be for China to try and uh, tighten their grip, you know, the CBOC to, to bark their bullshit? How many more times do you think that the global market will tolerate that before they start looking at China as such a pain in the ass to deal with, that they just permanently move out. And the CBLC loses out on everything, because now the only people that are trading Bitcoin in in China are doing so over the counter, i.e. completely untaxed. And I, I know that some people in the, in the background here are, are looking at this whole uh, layer two options and shit like that and scaling and all that bullshit and they're factoring in a tax layer 
I, I can almost guarantee it. And so, you know, in essence, they'll be continuing on what we've what we've tried to get away from. You know, instead of instead of us directly paying for war to happen somewhere on the planet, it'll be happening behind our back in some fucking layer, you know, some layer two bullshit. <coughs> Sorry. Some scaled layer within Bitcoin. And you won't know the difference. I mean, they they probably won't even indicate it on the price. It'll probably be like factored into the price. You know, some somewhere they'll, the thing will say like $10 on the website. But when you view it, it'll say like $10.25. Because somewhere along the line, the intermediaries altered the information to calculate for their tax to be in that transaction. And, you know, that's just on the face of the transaction. The exchange rate could change somewhere between when you first start up the transaction to when you complete the transaction. So, I mean, what, what are we talking about? Maybe maybe some sort of exchange rate adjustment on there or, or simply an unindicated adjustment. You know, that maybe they, they take a little more out of your wallet than you'd intended. Or charge you a little bit more on the the transaction fee that you didn't than you had initially thought, and just not indicate that to you. you know, I I've been watching this space for a long time, and it never ceases to amaze me the the level of duplicity that is in these markets. And I, I think it was always here. It just becomes that much more apparent when you're actually involved in it. And I mean, I, I've seen this last week where we had some guy supposedly in the um, part of the part of the Verge team and he posted some shit and it it's just pissing people off. It's not actually causing the, anything to happen to the price to hurt us or anything. But, you know, the point of the matter is, is this person was supposedly part of our team at one point and then just decided to go all cur- turncoat. And this is part of the... Uh, Part of the drawback to doing things with volunteers is it takes time to figure out what people's actual motivations are. You know, a lot of people just want to make money, you know, and so they think that being part of the marketing team, you know, they're going to get some special advantage over everybody else in launching products and stuff. And it just doesn't work that way with this coin. You know, we, we just, I, I think it's because Soonrock and, and the others that are, are really the the primary driving forces. They're not driven by that shit, you know. They're not saying I want to make a bazillion dollars on this fucking coin. They're saying I want to make private person to person global transactions available to everybody on earth. That's a whole different that that's a whole different mission than, you know, get rich and bro out, you know. I mean, and that seems to be the program for for a lot of people in crypto. And it's kind of a shame because, you know, this is a space where if you want to make money, there are a million and one ways that if you just apply yourself just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, you can make all kinds of money. I mean, I've been trading cryptocurrencies for a few years now. And I mean, I'm only now starting to get to the point where I can afford not to do a nine to five job because I've made enough in cryptocurrencies that, you know, if electricity were to go out tomorrow, I would, I, and I was able to get the funds out of assuming, of course, I, I would be able to live for a day or two before I had to actually work. You know, it kind of keeps me sustained in that, in that way, but it's taken me a long time to get here. And I've had, to, I've had a, I had to do a lot of, a lot of extra labor to get here, you know. But the point being is, it's not impossible, you know. And I, I think there, there are enough people with enough different interest caches or niches or whatever that if all you did was write about something that you really like to do, somebody would pay you for that shit in cryptocurrencies. You know, you got Steam it for that, and a few other, uh, a few other platforms that allow you to do that. And so, like I said, I I think that we're in a space where, you know, just asking people for money and they will give it to you. And yet, 
you have these other people that are just interested in trying to rip people off. And I, I just, I don't understand that. You know, I mean, literally the, the threshold for making money has been reduced so far that the temptation to try and rip other people off, is it, it shouldn't even fucking be there. It, it, it's like the only people that should be motivated to do that are people that are trying to keep things the way they are. And they do that by showing the inability of these systems to actually stand up to their scrutiny and their their challenges. <clears throat> and I, I think that's where Bitcoin has succeeded the most, is that despite all of those efforts, it's still operational. You know, you got you got a tax from the outside, you got a tax from the inside, you got a tax from from fucking government entities, you got a tax from corporate entities, you got a tax from private entities. And it's still going. It still had damn near nine years of 100% uptime this whole time. I mean, that that to me is really amazing. You know, and I don't think we're we're out of the woods with regard to this. And in all honesty, I think that if we can keep going along the same trajectory, that eventually we will get out of this and we will get bigger blocks... And the people that have been trying to fund the uh, the coup in Bitcoin with this segregated witness lightning network business, I, I think that uh, I think they'll run out of money, and uh, or at least run out of money they're willing to dedicate to something like that. But I, I could be wrong, you know. They could be just in, in for as long a haul as the rest of us. Personally, I would just like to see it die on the vine. I, I think that's the the like overall intention is that over the long haul there there will be fewer and fewer organizations that will be able to afford to challenge bitcoin and the way that it functions and that the, they'll eventually give up just out of lack of money you know it's like they'll they'll try and try and try and try and run out of money and, and try and try and try and try with other people's money and then those debts will become due and they won't have any money of their own to pay it back and they won't have achieved what they wanted to achieve and they'll go broke have to file chapter 11 and go under that would be the best of all outcomes as far as I'm concerned anyway I got another one of these uh, Segwit 2x fork cancelled articles and uh, this one was written 10 hours ago by Mr. Samuel Haig and I'm assuming from the name, yes, penis. Breaking news. Segwit 2x4 canceled. Mike Belshi has published a blog post indicating that the planned Segwit 2x hard fork will not be taking place. The markets have responded dramatically with the price quickly setting a new all-time high of approximately $7,900. It has been revealed that the Segwit 2x fork will not take place. BitGo CEO Mike Belshi has published a post indicating that the contentious Segwit 2x hard fork scheduled for this month will not occur due to a lack of community support. The post states that the, quote, <coughs> Segwit 2x effort began in May with a simple purpose, to increase the block size and improve Bitcoin scalability. At the time, the Bitcoin community was in crisis after nearly three years of heavy debate and consensus for SegWit seemed like a distant mirage, with only 30% supporting uh, support among miners. Belshi adds that, quote, SegWit 2x found its first success in August as it broke the deadlock and quickly led to SegWit's successful activation. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to read that next part, only because we've read it like four times already. The markets have responded with a dramatic surge in new all-time highs. Belshi predicts that, quote, As fees rise on the blockchain, we believe it will eventually become obvious that on-chain capacity increases are necessary. When that happens, we hope the community will come together and find a solution possibly with a block size increase. Until then, we are suspending plans for the upcoming 2 megabyte upgrade. 
the markets have responded with a dramatic surge into new all-time highs. Following the announcement, Bitcoin saw a spike of approximately 500 US dollars in less than one hour, signifying a highly bullish reaction to the news. As of this writing, the price of Bitcoin is consolidating above the preceding all-time high at approximately $7,700 after having established a new, new all-time high of $7,900. And apparently this is while it was still like actually falling and it hadn't gone down to like $6,900 yet. So yeah, um... It, all of this is derived off of fucking one blog post. I mean, we've read like four articles so far, three or four articles, same fucking thing, all off of one blog post. Now, you want to talk about centralization? I mean, centralization of opinion? That, that's that's clearly going on here. Hi, <sighs> but I still have something up my sleeve with regard to this and uh, I'm I keep checking back here to the uh, to coin dance and um, the number does fluctuate just a teeny tiny um, but it, it's still reading at 81.3 percent uh, segwit 2x intention is being flagged by or flagged support for segwit 2x is being flagged by 81.3% of the miners right now. So, you know, this whole bullshit that, you know, it wasn't going to go through or whatever, it's just that. It's fucking bullshit. I mean, because the miners haven't stopped flagging support, so I, I, don't, I don't see what the holdup is. But I, I do want to touch on a point here. And that, that article did indicate the... Uh, the fact that the stalemate was broke on SegWit with by virtue of the NW uh, NYA rather, and that that should tell you something right there. And I I said when the NYA first happened, I said, no matter what, they will not fulfill on the two megabyte block increase. They just won't do it. You know, and and I was really disappointed that they they uh, had agreed to initially putting up Segwit first, and then and then uh, two megabytes afterward. And I I knew immediately because the two weren't going to happen at once that one would most likely never happen. That the core developers would welch on it and say fuck you, we're not going to write the code for it, and we're not going to support the code for it. And we're not going to include it into future BIPs because we don't want it. And that's been exactly what's fucking happened. I, I said that like when when the NYA happened, which was what like oh I don't know like July or fucking June or some shit like that. But it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. And I, I'd said the same thing about the Hong Kong agreement. When I when I heard about that and that that's what they were they were willing to do in order to get the uh, two megabyte block increase, I, I knew right away that Core would welch. You know they get their Segwit, they get the the miners flagging support for Segwit, and then they would welch, and that's exactly what they've done. So you know I, there there's for predictability for you. That's about the been, been the most predictable thing in all of crypto is humans looking out for their own interests and being willing to put their own interests ahead of the interests of everybody else on the planet that's involved in this. So, you know, I, I think that's one of the reasons why it was initially, or why it was intended to operate as a, as a system without third-party intermediaries, is that Satoshi Nakamoto knew if there was anybody like running it, you know, if there was any gate where they they could say no to transactions or whatever, that that position would be abused and it would drive us right back to where we are right now. Or, or were when Bitcoin started. But it, it seems to be a little bit worse now only because they're lying about it. 
They're fucking telling everybody, oh yeah, this is Bitcoin. This is, Dude, the fucking address structure isn't even the same. The block structure isn't the same. It's not the fucking same coin. It's something radically different. And as far as I'm concerned, if it was scrapped tomorrow, we would be in a better position than we are today. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw down a little bit more music. It's been sufficiently long enough time. And uh, I had a request for some sixth, but the gentleman who asked didn't bother to tell me a song. I don't get it. Let's see if he, he did put one in here. I don't know. He he mentioned it once that he, he wanted... Uh, he wanted some sixth, and uh, I mean uh, that, that's cool. I, <clears throat> I certainly enjoy their music, and um, yeah, well, we did one off of uh, Future in Whose Eyes, so let's go ahead and uh, do one off of De- Death of a Dead Day, and um, and we've done Summer Rain. Um, damn it, Jim. And Bland Street Bloom here on Coin Metal. And that was Slipknot with Weight and Bleed. Uh, my apologies on that. It just went a little bit over long, you know. But, you know, it happens. It happens. <sighs> yeah, I found a, uh, a, a new thing to do with my, uh, my water bong, and that's to take. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this stuff, uh, essential oils, and um, a friend of mine, his mom is really into this stuff, and so anyway, I um, I put a little bit of peppermint in my bong water, very, very cool, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of, uh, of vaping a little bit, but uh, yeah, anyway, I've got more of these articles about this the supposed suspension of the old forkage and uh, yeah we're, we're gonna dive into more people making themselves look silly by misreporting based on one blog post on reddit this one from Reuters okay I understand this is how closely these people watch this shit it was on reddit Okay, it was like R Bitcoin or RBTC or some shit like that or RBTC Segwit or anyway, it, it was like a subreddit that this information came out on and like everybody in the fucking world seems to know about it, right? And and they're all harping on it and jumping on it like it's the truth, but they're not going and bothering to check in the veracity of these claims. And the fact of the matter is is that the hashing power has not changed. I mean, there, there has been a drop in hashing power, we've noted. But some have claimed that that is hashing power that's being set up specifically for the fork on the 15th. And, as we have previously noted in this show, according to Coindance, 81% of the fucking miners out there are still flagging support for Segwit2x. So whether that means it's actually going to happen or not, I couldn't tell you. None of these motherfuckers can. That's the thing. Is that they're all reporting this like it is the God's honest truth. And it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's one fucking blog post. And as a matter of fact, from what I've noted so far, the the very same company that supposedly wrote that fucking thing... The very same company is still flagging support for Segwit 2X. So you fucking explain that shit to me. If they if they were intending to drop Segwit 2X, they themselves would have dropped Segwit 2X, and they haven't. So or or stop flagging support for it rather, or intent to support rather. <clears throat> what that actually means is beyond anybody's guess. See that's. And, and that's the thing that you have to pay attention to, all right? Is that the miners aren't flagging support for Segwit2x. They're flagging intent to support for Segwit2x. There, there, there's a difference there, or at least there supposedly is. You know, whether or not that means that if it looks like it's popular enough, they'll actually fully engage support. 
I have no idea. And neither do any of these other assholes. And that's the thing. Okay? Is they're telling you this shit like it's fucking true, man. You, you might as well forget about those fucking free Segwit coins. It's, it's just not going to happen. But the truth is existing in conflict with this interpretation of events. And so let's go ahead and read this article. This one, uh, Reuters. Bitcoin hits record high after developers suspend plans to fork currency. And this is written by Gertrude Chavez, Dreyf- uh, whatever. Gertrude Dreyfus. We, we don't do that, that dash in the middle thing. You take a name, girl. And uh, Jan- Janima Kelly. And uh, this is supposedly approximately a three minute read. It will probably take me longer because I annotate shit. New York slash London Reuters. Bitcoin hit a record high just shy of $8,000 on Wednesday after a coalition of developers and investors suspended a software upgrade planned for next Thursday that could have split the digital currency in two. In an email on Wednesday, the lead developer of the team planning to carry out the up, the upgrade said Segwit2x would be scrapped for now as it could, quote, divide the community. Like they gave a fuck about that with Segwit1. The email by Mike Belshi, chief executive of blockchain security firm Bitco, was also signed by some of the biggest names in the Bitcoin world. Now, hold on a minute. We've been talking about it as a Segwit, I mean a... Um, uh, subreddit right so now what if and I didn't even check this I, I probably should check and see if it's just a copy and paste by somebody else in which case it could have just as easily been fabricated by some fucking asshole and Mike Belshi is going I didn't write this shit you never know anyway continuing on The email by Mike Belshi, chief executive of blockchain security firm BitGo, was also signed by some of the biggest names in the Bitcoin world. Segwit2x is an agreement among high-profile figures in the Bitcoin world aimed at upgrading the Bitcoin network's capacity. It received significant support when it was announced in May, but many Bitcoin developers had withdrawn support for the upgrade over the last few months analysts said (laughs) yeah the software upgrade would have attempted to address the bitcoin network's limitations in processing millions of daily transactions the network has not kept pace with growth and is unable to process transactions fast enough that's not true at all the upgrade would have changed bitcoin's rules leading to a so-called fork effectively cloning the existing Bitcoin to create another cryptocurrency. Segwit2x was supposed to be the second step in a broad two-step process to enhance transaction capacity. The first step occurred over over the summer. Indefinitely postponing the fork is a healthy move for crypto assets, said Guy Ziskind, CEO and co-founder of Enigma, a data-driven crypto investment platform. Quote, The ability of the Bitcoin community to self-correct and avoid content- a contentious fork inspires confidence and shows how the ecosystem is entering a more mature phase, he added. Bullshit. Bitcoin sur- surged to a record high of 7888 on the Luxembourg-based Bitstamp exchange in the 20 minutes that followed the statement. That was the last traded, it was last traded up 3% on the day at 7354.10 BTC Bitstamp. Our our goal has always been a smooth upgrade for Bitcoin, Bitgo's Belshi has said in his email. Although we strongly believe in the need for a larger block size, there is something we believe in. Some, there is something we believe is even more important: keeping the community together. Charlie Lee, creator of the Litecoin cryptocurrency and a leading industry expert, 
said in a post on Twitter, the Bitcoin community may need to implement Segwit2x in the future anyway, but it should be done when there is consensus. Yeah, get rid of fucking Segwit and just go with the 2x and you'll get consensus. Better yet, go with like 4x or maybe 8x. If you did 4x right now, we if we just did Bitcoin with 4 megabyte blocks, that fucking mempool would clear, the TX fees would drop through the floor, and we would be beyond this fucking bullshit. But no! No, that's too simple. That's too fucking easy. We gotta try and force this fucking Segwit off-chain lightning network fucking bullshit on the network. And I, I just gotta say, fuck you. Fuck you. Anyway, so yeah, um, <clears throat> I would like to point out something in this article, and it kind of caught my attention here. And let's see, where was it? The, there was just one little little snippet, and it really tied it together for me. Blah 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 blah. blah. Bitcoin network something daily transactions and works not keep well. That's not it. Aha! Here we go. And th this is probably the most important fucking pair of sentences in this entire article. Not to say it wasn't well presented, and, and at least they made an attempt to be original about their perspective. I mean, this is the first time I heard from this guy, Guy Ziskind, so that that's interesting. Anyway, here it is. Segwit2x was supposed to be the second step in a broad two-step process to enhance transaction capacity. The first step occurred over the summer. Okay, what, what that whole sentence means, what that whole sentence is talking about is that when this thing started, okay, back with the Hong Kong agreement, there were two stipulations. There were SegWit, and there was two megabyte blocks. This was the first agreement, and I knew when I saw it, and the fact that it would not be all implemented at once, that said to me, one of the parties is going to Welch, it is most likely going to be the developers. Here we are, how many months later, and, and, and that's exactly what's appeared to happen. However, However, we th this story is not finished, and we actually have more articles pertaining to this exact subject. And, and I'm kind of like trying to time it to where I get to the last one last, but you know what? I I'm going to go ahead and throw it down now just to make sure that we actually get it in and we actually get an opportunity to talk about it a little bit. <clears throat> And uh, <laughs> this this is uh, Bitcoin Segwit 2x. This is on LinuxFoundation.org slash PiperMail slash Bitcoin Segwit 2x slash 217 dash November slash 000689.html. And this is Bitcoin Segwit Segwit 2x final steps. And this is by, um, I'm assuming posted by. Um, BitPico, uh, BitPico at iCloud.com, and here it is. We are carrying out the fork regardless, as everything is set in motion. Backing down the difficulty right now is a strategy. Wonder why 30% network hash rate disappeared? It's ours. The miners that will continue what is set in motion. A handful of humans cannot stop what they have no control over sent from my spaceship and this and this is it the segwit 2x effort began on in may with a simple purpose to increase blah 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 and the, i guess these are just quotes and and that was just it the the top here we are carrying out the fork regardless as everything is set in motion so that's a big, uh, a big finger, yeah. Let's look at next message. 
Let me see. So many blah blah. blah just in time. I'm lucky to <laughs> dipshit. You know, it, it, it's funny. You know, do your fucking homework, man. Has has the flags gone away for support for uh, for uh, Bitcoin uh, Segwit two X? Nope. And guy isn't doing his homework. You know, I mean, hey. And the likely wish would come up to. All right. Anyway, that was not as as wonderful as I was hoping it would be. Um. Like I said, I I think this whole thing is just big fucking disinformation campaign, and they're trying to get people to sell off their Segwit two X coins early. And you know that that could be good. That could be bad. You never know. But, yeah, so we're done with that article. Close the tab. So what do we got up here? <laughs> yeah, not quite yet on that one. Maybe that one. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out exactly which one of these to go with. The uh, We've already covered the Bitcoin Segwit 2x thing quite enough on this show today I, I think it's just it's humorous that it's it's gotten this far and that people are doing what they're doing as far as this big ass media campaign um I, I don't know I, I find it I find it really fucking hilarious ooh ooh this was something that I did want to cover honestly and Let's get to it. And this this one um, this one kind of got under our radar a little bit, and um, somebody like tagged me here in, in Coin Metal. Blah, blah blah blah. Cool. All right. Anyway, here it is, and this one is uh, on Bitcoin.com. Silk Road Secret Service agent sentenced. This was written 14 hours ago by C. Edward Kelso, and I'm going to assume because there is no picture, yes, penis. A Secret Service agent, key in prosecuting Ross Ulbricht during the infamous Silk Road case, was himself sentenced to prison on 7 November 2017 for money laundering crimes while investigating Mr. Ulbricht. Oh my goodness. So let's see here. Let's get back down to the article. Article. They got so many like titles on here and like subtitles and shit that it's it's kind of confusing. Anyway, continuing. Silk Road agent sentenced again to prison time. Senior business editor at Ars Technica, Cyrus Farivar, was the sole member of the public in court of San Francisco's U.S. District Court. He was there to witness a sad chapter in Bitcoin history, an an infuriating one for most Bitcoiners. Disgraced U.S. Secret Service agent Sean Bridges was sentenced to two more years of prison. Agent Bridges was already serving nearly six years for for thieving money from Silk Road members while investigating Ross Albrecht. The new round of of prison time stems from charges brought after Agent Bridges was first convicted. Authorities believe he zapped at least 1,600 bitcoins to himself while the ink was drying on that first guilty plea. As pointed out by Mr. Farivar, Agent Bridges, quote, laundered the funds stolen from the United States government by moving the funds out of the BTCE account and into other various online wallets and accounts, according to court documents. Among many outrages, one immediately jumps out of Mr. Farivar's accounts, and a courtesy not normally extended to non-government citizens Agent Bridges was temporarily free between the time that he was previously convicted in late 2015 and then rearrested in early 2016, the article claims. 
Former prosecuting attorney Catherine Hahn details how, while free, Agent Bringes, quote, tried to change names and social security numbers and, quote, it seemed that new criminal activity was possibly afoot, she told Ars Technica. A tearful Secret Service agent begs for better prison conditions. Agent Bridges also mo moaned tearfully about his present terms of incarceration. I'm pretty much alone 99% of the time, Mr. Farivar quotes the secret agent, now a prisoner. Quote, they talk about one hour per day. It's more like one hour per three days. Six years I face in the case psychology, psychologically breaks you. You're just alone all the time. It's an interesting contrast for most Bitcoiners who are aware of Ross Albrecht's case and incarceration. Mr. Albrecht is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole compared with a corrupt Secret Services Service agent's relatively paltry eight. And while debate might be about Mr. Albrecht's ultimate involvement in Silk Road, no charges were ever brought having to do with stealing funds or defrauding anyone. Crucially, and unlike Agent Bridges, Ross Albrecht never pled guilty, maintaining his innocence. At the conviction's worst, assuming Mr. Albrecht's guilt, he ran an underground eBay of sorts where buyers and sellers were brought together by a product agnostic in different website, Silk Road. Some analysts have maintained Silk Road provided a safer environment for buying and selling products deemed illegal by the government, products otherwise exchanged in person, carrying obvious dangers. Quote, U.S. District Judge Richard Seaborg said that Agent Bridges totality of crimes and continued dishonesty to the government, Ars Technica quotes, was a betrayal of trust and among the worst of crimes. Judge Seaborg scolded, quote, particularly troubling is the fact that Mr. Bridges did engage in further, in further efforts to conceal and need to steal after he entered the plea agreement. Bitcoiners wishing to learn more about Ross Albrecht and his case are encouraged to surf over to, Ross, uh, to freeross.org. Oh, man. You know, th this is the fucked up... You, you want to know the really fucked up part about it? Is if it weren't for this asshole agent, everything would have been fine with regard to Silk Road. Because what happened was... Asshole agent had infiltrated the Silk Road and gotten really close with Mr. Ross Albrecht. And <clears throat> while in his employ, he had access to or gained access to several several of the accounts having to do with Silk Road. And he cleaned out a shit ton of Bitcoin out of the Silk Road himself. Now, this is where it gets tricky. He told Ross Albrecht that he could hire some a hitman to hit the or to um, assassinate the supposed hacker that hacked the money and, and took it from him. When in fact, it was him. It was the fucking secret agent. So the secret agent committed a crime. Okay, and then he induced Ross Ulbrich to commit another crime. Although he didn't actually commit the crime, it was. It's actually been debated as to whether or not it was actually Ross Ulbrich that was in contact with with the secret agent, secret service agent. And so. <laughs> The guy creates the crime by stealing the fucking coins. Then he tells Ross that somebody else did it and then he will hire somebody to kill the guy that did it. Okay? And no no funds actually changed hands or whatever with regard to you know this and this is the supposed thing. And again, 
we don't know that that Ross was the actual contact, the direct contact that Agent Bridges was involved with here. We just know that they were going under the moniker DPRK, which was more or less Ross's account. So anyway, <laughs> they railroaded Ross in the fucking court system and sentenced him to a lifetime in prison without the hope of ever having parole. And this asshole, Agent Bridges, who stole the money, entrapped Ross Ulbricht, supposedly, or, or somebody acting under the name DPRK, entrapped them, okay, created the crime, created the, the instance for entrapment, and then himself walks away with the fucking money, or tries to, and gets busted for that. And after he gets busted for it, while he's in the plea agreement for that, he takes 1600 Bitcoin out of it and sends it to himself somewhere else in hopes that once he gets out of prison, he's just going to be able to tap the fucking Bitcoin. Can you believe this shit? Now, see, if it were me, this motherfucker would be in Guantanamo Bay right now. And he would be getting waterboarded until we knew every fucking account that he had and every way that he had to get to his accounts and we would be getting those fucking funds that were stolen from the the Silk Road back into circulation. Because from what I understand, there there are several Bitcoins still unaccounted for in that. <coughs> It's been a long time since I've, I've read up on, on that subject, but it, it seems to me there was like a 13,000 Bitcoin discrepancy between what the estimated stolen funds were and what the feds were actually able to recover. So I'm not entirely certain what the deal is on that, but apparently this asshole tried to send himself 1,600 of those Bitcoin. And so they exist somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? We, we would be fucking waterboarding. We'd be doing a lot of fuck. We would get Dick Cheney in there to do the fucking waterboarding himself. And we would find that motherfucking money. We would find that shit. And, and you want to talk about, you know, actual justice. You know, if President Trump were to do one commutation, one pardon that would mean a shit to the future... It would be Ross Albrecht. It would be Ross Albrecht. And as a matter of fact, I would then retry Agent Bridges under all of the other fucking shit that he could be tried for. Because I guarantee you, if somebody were to take the the time to go through all of his actions just on the computers, right? You know, just, just his digital trails. And, and try and figure out exactly... Every single federal and state and city ordinance that he broke and then sentenced him separately for all of those, that man would never see the light of day ever again. He, he'd be tucked down in the most isolation of isolations in the, sm the tiniest covey at the bottom of a fucking federal supermax prison. You know, like the, the kind of place where they, they have like like steel ceilings and, and magnetic boots and they just they turn the fucking thing on without even warning you and suck you right up to the ceiling and you just hang there for fucking 23 hours a day. <laughs> That's the kind of fucking place this asshole deserves to go. I, I, I just... I. It, I look at this case, really, and, and, you know, when I reflect on this one and I reflect on, like, you know, uh, Kim.com, I think, this is such a rabid fucking travesty of justice. There's no, there's no fucking co correlation between justice and what was done here. You know, because like this article points out, Ross never defrauded anybody. Ross never stole anybody's fucking money. And as a matter of fact, Ross never killed anybody. And, and to our knowledge... He may not have even hired any or tried to hire anybody to kill somebody. And if he did, I probably would have hired somebody to kill somebody too if the motherfucker stole it. I think it was like 220,000 Bitcoin or some shit like that. It was, it was some outrageous sum of money that this buttfucker stole from him. 
and and then tells him it was somebody else that did it, and then tries to hire somebody to kill the somebody that I, I, it's such a fucking convoluted case. I swear. I, I bet you anything. We dig deep enough into this. This was like the game plan with with the 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 group that Agent Bridges was reporting to in the DEA or the FBI or the DOJ or the whatever fucking group that he was associated with, Secret Service Agent. He was probably just a fucking hacker who did all this shit and then told the fucking Fed, said, look, dude, I've got a ton of fucking Bitcoin and I'm willing to give it to you, but you got to sign me up as a secret agent so that I'm immune from all the fucking criminal shit I did to get here. Either that or he was like hired as a third party super secret agent man, whatever contractor because of his talents or his capabilities <coughs> and made a super secret agent or whatever. And, you know, he served his purpose and now, you know, he's being left out to dry. But, you know, he was smart enough to know that he was going to be left out to dry, and so he stashed a shit ton of Bitcoin somewhere and tried to send some of them to himself, and now he gets to spend more time in the pokey. Which is just, but not just enough for my tastes. Like I said, the man should be in fucking Guantanamo Bay right now, and we should be finding out every single Satoshi he's got stashed and, and, and getting the, those funds back. At least to the the people that lost them, because I'm sure there's there's plenty of records, and I'm sure the FBI has every single fucking one of them, of all the transactions and all the volumes of other people's money that were ganked from the Silk Road by this asshole. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I I have a feeling this story is uh, is far from over. I think that uh, Monkey Boy here, um, like I said, I think he belongs in Guantanamo. This is bullshit. So we'll go ahead and get out of that article. And what do we got next? We've already covered Segwit 2X, beat it into the ground. This one is kind of interesting because I, I, I talk about flight, but not quite yet. I did want to cover this one because this is like a reoccurring therm- theme here on Coin Metal. Um, one of the uh, one of the chief arguments for Segwit and all that business is the quote unquote centralization of mining that we've seen over the uh, over the last couple years, and a lot of it has been happening in China. Now I've said that this is a temporary aberration. It will only take so long before, you know, the Chinese climb down on something and and spoil the game for everybody or make it less appealing to deal with the Chinese. And they've done this several times now. They've pulled several fucking moves where, you know, they say they're going to fucking make it illegal to trade Bitcoin. And what happens? Nothing. You know, they try to try to implement whatever change it is, and then it, it just it doesn't go anywhere. So people figure out a new way to trade around, and, and that's that. So here it is, and this one's on uh, Cointelegraph, and let's check and verify that it's a full article. Yep, it looks like a full article. And this is by Darren Pollock. China struggles to lay killing blow to Bitcoin. Currency thrives. And this was written approximately five minutes ago, according to this article. China became the first country to take a hardline approach to ICOs, then moved on to Bitcoin and the exchanges that trade the digital currency. Despite these bold and brazen efforts, Bitcoin's price is higher than ever, and the the currency continues to be a factor in China. Where there's a will, there's a way and Chinese investors are still managing to trade Bitcoin and buy into controversial ICOs. Fear of drop? The initial news of China's takedown of Bitcoin, which was timed with Jamie Dimon's slur on Bitcoin, caused the price to take a deep dive. As the price dropped from $5,000 to $3,000 on the news, 
the fear was that further exclusion of a major Bitcoin player like China would erase Bitcoin's price gains this year. However, this has not been the case at all. Instead of a total shutdown, what has happened is that resourceful Chinese traders have adjusted their methods, switching to a private over-the-counter market. Over-the-counter Bitcoin trading has risen from about 5% at the beginning of September before the exchanges were shuttered to about 20% a month later. This according to data cited in a report by the National Committee of Experts on Internet Financial Security, a government-backed research group. Change in Tactics Traders have had to move with the times to stay, to stay relevant in the Bitcoin market which has also seen a change in, in messaging app to affect these peer-to-peer -peer trades. State-controlled messaging app WeChat has seen an exodus of Bitcoin-related chat as the more neutral Telegram has picked up the slack. This is where the Chinese population has found aid in making over-the-counter trades. Mining Mission There are still plenty of issues for miners to overcome in China, Due to new regulations, many have fled to China's hinterland in Gan Gansu and Inner Mongolia where cheap electricity can power massive rigs. This new peer-to-peer -peer market, however, is still young and not liquid enough to allow these miners to set up the sale of their newly minted coins, according to Thomas Glucksman, head of marketing for Gatecoin. Quote, there are a lot of questions about the future of Chinese of the Chinese miners given that they still need to pay for staff and operations in Renimbi. It's either a case of migrating their operations or facilitating Renimbi cash out through the over the counter market. Oh, I think either one will more likely present itself as an option. As this article points out, where there is a will, there is a way. And uh, there's a lot of fucking will in the Chinese, you know? I mean, that that's that's just all there is to it. But, you know, like we've talked about earlier in this show, Venezuela has been picking up a lot of slack with regard to Bitcoin mining and Ethereum mining in the, uh, in the last few months. And so, you know, it's with that, you gotta, you gotta think, man... <clears throat> The, the whole idea of of mining centralization staying the way it is uh -uh. no 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 it's not gonna happen it's just not gonna happen I mean I I think that those are those are the kinds of inefficiencies that natural systems just don't tolerate. You know they 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 just don't tolerate excessive inhibitions, especially unnecessary ones, and ones that are not terribly enforceable or, or particularly effectual in their intent. You know, I mean, if it doesn't stop people from trading, all in all, then it's pretty useless. And and, and really, we what, what have we seen? The people that are willing to endure the additional stress of of going through it behind their their government's backs, they, they just fucking do that shit. You know, they just do it, and, and I expect that that's going to continue with with cryptocurrencies. That that will will continue to see these these little blockages, and then the the shit will just find a way around it. You know, it'll just find a way around it. <sighs> Anywho. I think I have one more article, yes. I have one more that I really wanted to cover today because it's about a subject matter that isn't coin and it isn't metal, but it is it is very near and dear to my heart. And that's the thought of individual flight. And um, th this one kind of excites me here, even though it doesn't quite get to the point where I would like to see it go, it, it, it's getting pretty fucking close. And uh, this one's on uh, digitaltrends.com. Uber wants flying taxis to soar above Los Angeles by 2020 with help from NASA. 
This is written by uh, Keith Nelson Jr., posted on November 8th, 2017 at 9.55 a.m. In the future, car traffic will have no effect on your taxi ride. At least that's what Uber and NASA are counting on. On Wednesday, November 8th at the Web Summit in Lisbon, Portugal, Uber's head of product and Head of product Jeff Holden announced more details about Uber's flying taxi program. Holden said Los Angeles will be the third city Uber plans to use as a test site for its flying taxi project Elevate by 2020. Dallas and Dubai were the first two cities added as initial test sites for Uber's flying taxi initiative in April. Holden also revealed Uber signed a space contract agreement with NASA in an effort to create a custom air traffic control system that would manage Uber's fleet of low-flying aircraft. Los Angeles is one of the most congested cities in the world today, Holden said. They essentially have no mass transit infrastructure. This type of approach allows us to very inexpensively deploy a mass transit method that actually doesn't make traffic worse. Hmm. Well, I see some good and some bad in this. I mean, I, I like the idea just because it's fucking personal air travel. And I mean, if you can get it going cheap enough, that, that would be even better. Uh, the problem I see with it is that I'm, I'm not behind the stick. And, and that's where I want to be in something that's flying. You know, I'm... I, I guess I'm comfortable with with flying in a 747, but that's because that's the kind of travel, the means of travel that I'm taking, and it's not out of choice. It's just that that's the monopoly right now, you know. And I feel like if I can fly in a video game, and, and I do fly very well in a video game, um, <clears throat> that I could fly just as well in real life, and. Maybe you have like an AI interaction with it where um, it detects certain things like your elevation, uh, your trajectory, that kind of stuff. And, you know, maybe if uh, maybe certain zones will have height restrictions, you know, that you got to be like a thousand feet up or or whatever. And that you have like a um, like a lower boundary. So you're not really interacting with birds and, and shit like that. In your your craft, and ultimately, I think like a a, a VTOL style craft would would be pretty advantageous, you know. Especially when when you're talking about something like like Los Angeles, I, I think it's perfectly doable to have large buildings with you know some sort of uh, like aircraft receiving and launch pad on the on this on the roof or something like that in order that the the building would be essentially like a big aircraft carrier you know where like you you land on a pad and then the the pad goes down and you get out of your aircraft and then it takes the aircraft to a specific parking spot or something and that way when you come out you know it's already waiting for you because you've scanned at the at the beginning of the trip back down to the parking lot, you've scanned some sort of key or some sort of code, you know, wave, waved a card in front of a sensor or some shit like that, and your your vehicle will be there waiting for you when you get down to the parking area, and it'll be on a pad, and you'll fucking climb in your vehicle, the pad will lift up to the roof, and then you'll fucking launch, and you'll go wherever the fuck you want to go. That's the future that I want. And this Uber thing, it's a step in that direction, but it's not quite there yet. You know, I, I really believe that our destiny is in the fucking stars. And the sooner we get off of this mud ball, the better, you know. I mean, placing a little bit more air between ourselves and it would probably be beneficial for everybody. <laughs> and I, it kind of reminded me of a, another thing that I've been thinking about lately is... Uh, like the the natural state of the planet and how our our actions have have disrupted it a little bit. Like I said, I, I I think that our our goal over the next century should be cleaning up the detritus of of the previous century, 
and there there's certainly a lot of work to be done in that realm. And I, I think now that we have cryptocurrencies and we have a a greater awareness of our impact on on nature and whatnot, that we might see a, a phase coming in where we're monetizing the efforts of cleaning up nature. And I mean, really, that's the only thing that stops people from from going out and cleaning up shit. You know, they'd rather sit on the couch because, well, they can make more money sitting on the couch. But, you know, when there's a, uh, a globally funded fund, right, that's got, like, work contracts associated with it, and you just got to go to the board and say, well, hmm, what do I want to do today? Well, I want to do something within five miles of my house. And, you know, you, you do it like a uh, like you're searching for a restaurant or some shit like that on Google. You know, you want to you want to work somewhere, you know, within five to 15 miles of your house. You want to work, uh, do something ecological, some sort of cleanup, you know, and then you get a list of jobs that are available in that area and what the rates were. And you could just decide, well, you know, I could go pick berries or I could go 10 bees or I could go, you know, do some sort of cleanup or some sort of recycling effort and just do it. Get paid for it in whatever digital currency you choose and be able to transact that anywhere you choose. That's the kind of feature that I see. And I don't see people getting hyper rich on fucking transaction fees in, in the mix of that. Because that, again... It is unnecessary friction. There's so much other shit that we could be making money on. Stuff with a lot higher retu- rate of return. You know, both both initially and over the long term. In, in just what I've been talking about here. Just reclaiming nature. You know, you go, th- go through like Chicago or Boston or any of these or Detroit, any of these towns where they had this major manufacturing boom in the in the fifties through the seventies and they've got all this these buildings that aren't doing a fucking thing except rotting, you know, and housing some indigents. And that that's that's cool in and of itself. But they could just as easily be, you know, tending some fucking fruit garden in one of those buildings. They would be useful to their their community they get that that additional pride they get fed because they're right there i mean that that's the kind of thing that i see as the next phase for where we're at because the this outright consumerism i i really think that it's it's running the end of its course you know that we've we've kind of gotten to the point where we have everything we really 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 need to do everything that we've dreamt about doing and it's just now about getting those resources concentrated into the things that we want to do the most and that are the best for the environment and ourselves it's kind of a an application of statistical process control over things that it was never really meant to be applied to but could benefit us a lot more than than it does now and it is with that that i want to go ahead and close out this episode we will be back again on friday 8 p.m pacific standard time and uh so yeah you know with regard to this segwa 2x thing it's it's not over it's not over don't believe what you've heard and uh keep your eyes open you never know something may change So yeah, until Friday, I'd like to thank you all for listening, and uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. I will be doing my best to get this and some back episodes up there on my YouTube channel for you guys to listen at your leisure. So it's with that that I'd like y'all to trade safe, do your homework, and watch out for your bunghole because nobody else is going to do it for you. And let's go ahead and close this out with something from Body Count. We have not played any Body Count today. It's almost like a criminal act, but not quite. <laughs> anyway, um, as far as what to throw down, let's go Bloodlust. 
Thank you again for listening. Y'all have an excellent evening.